Anyway, let's get on to the fun stuff. Julie, tell us a little bit about your beginner's journey. What what did you so so you did a a transition from another career, right? I did. I am actually a pharmacist and it wasn't a I guess for having family, it wasn't very flexible. I had to actually be at the store and it was scheduled shifts. And so once I had children, I decided I, I wanted to be spending more time with them. So I stepped down from my pharmacy career. And during the time that I was at home, I was like, well, what am I going to do? I wanted to add something to my skill set. And one of my friends who's a software engineer said, I love my job. And I was like, well, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, he was a software engineer and he mentioned like, yeah, I really like doing logic puzzles and solving problems. And I was like, I love doing all those things. So I thought I'd give it a try. But the first year that I was studying, it was all solo. I didn't know anybody. And I just spent like a little bit, like about an hour or so a day just to see if it's something that I would be interested in doing. Yeah. And so it wasn't after that first year, like into the second year when I started finding communities to study with and really getting into like really solving things and building things uh, where I said to myself, you know, this, this could possibly be a career transition. So. Yeah. And I think, I think the community part of it is really really uh important ah drew says hi hey drew um hi drew so i'm wondering kind of what how did you how did you get involved with ruby what what was it about ruby that got you into it it... or did you actually start with ruby or another language yeah uh it actually was ruby was my first language uh is the person who said he loved his job (laughs) doing ruby no, and I did okay. ask for a recommendation for what what would be a good first language. I actually asked two people what would be a first good language. One of them said Ruby or JavaScript, and the other one said Ruby or Python. And no, I take that back. It was JavaScript or Python and Ruby or Python or Ruby. Or, I don't remember. Anyways, one of them said Ruby and... I was like, well, I don't know where to start. I need some sort of a curriculum because I can't just, I'm one of those people that need that structure. And at the time, there's a boot camp called App Academy that had released their whole curriculum online. And because they used Ruby, that ended up being my first language. I didn't end up going through the whole course, but I got started with them. I got started with them, but I also got started with Code Academy as well. Okay, so you found a course or course load that you were interested in taking and then just decided, okay, that's the language. I'll go with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pretty much. <laughs> well, Hey, that works. So I, I know you've been with the code for all um, podcast that you're, that you're co-hosting uh, with Andrew. One of the focuses is on like junior developers talking about things with junior developers and what they're going through and and what kind of things they need to um, deal with. What, what kind of got you into that, doing that podcast and and why is that important? I remember during my learning journey, I needed all sorts of different methods of learning things. So I enjoy watching videos. I also enjoy reading books, uh, learning, like pairing with people and I listened to a lot of podcasts, but some of the like Ruby specific ones were kind of over my head and I would still listen to them, but maybe get like, I don't know, 10% of what they were talking about. And I was thinking, you know, maybe like passive, it'll passively, I don't know, I'm going to inherit passively the information. So then... I guess at RailsConf, that was my first conference um, in the one in May this year. Uh, So Andrew and Jason and Chris had done a talk about starting a podcast without experience or something like that. 
And I was in that talk and I was thinking to myself, like, I, I really wish there was a more specific to juniors type of Ruby podcast. And, and so I pitched the idea to Jason and Andrew was right next to him. And Andrew was like, I'll be your co-host. <laughs> and <laughs> that's Andrew and I was for like, you. Really? <laughs> I was like, really? Uh, okay, let's do it. And so it just kind of started. I I really wasn't expecting to be the one doing it. I just wanted something like this. <laughs> and since Andrew was kind of hand holding me the on the whole way, I was like, Yeah, let's let's do this. Um another reason why I chose to kind of continue doing it is uh, for people who don't know me, I have social anxiety and it's really hard for me to talk in front of people and speak what's like, I have vision in my head, but it's really hard for me to express what that is in words. And yeah. so I thought having this podcast will kind of break down some of those barriers. And I think it's working a uh, little by little. Well, you're doing great so far here. I mean, <laughs> you're talking just as well as I do, and I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, I, I, and I started with the same problem. I have this very, very bad problem with brain image to words type of thing. Um, and which caused me social anxiety in the beginning because I couldn't, I had a problem just, you know, getting it out of here to other ears. Um, and, and this did help doing stuff like this. I, did YouTube channels. I did live game streaming. I've done this stuff and, and this does actually help. So uh, good on you for following through on that. I know that's a, a big step to take um, to step into something like that. Cause it's not a comfort zone. And I don't know, it, it could be the ADHD too, but I often forget about things that I really wanted to say. And like one of the things I kept telling myself to say is like, Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm honored to be here. And I already forgot to say that. So thank you for. <laughs> well, we, we thank you for. The show and it's an honor to be here. <laughs> well, thanks. And we thank you for taking time out of your day to, to, to come on here. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for, for, well, since we first talked. I mean, I was really interested in what you were doing with the junior developer stuff because I'm kind of passionate about that, probably because. Both of us have older teenagers are starting to think about career paths and stuff. And, you and know, my 18 year old is looking like he's on the path of software engineering. Now, the reason I say that is because he procrastinates with every piece of homework except the programming homework. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's kind of an indication of maybe what he should be doing. So that's a clear sign right there. If you like this clip and want to watch another one, you can click right here. Or if you want to watch the full video, you can click here.